Hey everyone, my name is Sherlyn Matthew and I am a part of the worship team here at Metro Church. Uh, we're so excited to have you here today for the Academy of Worship. Um, for today's topic, we're going to be talking about worship leaders as servants. And I want to help take you through what that means and what scripture says about it. So the first question I have for you today is, what is a worship leader? I want you to take a few seconds and just think about what that means to you. Um, think about what the Lord might be saying to you and just ponder on that for a second. I took a few seconds um, and also meditated on what the Lord was saying to me about it. And here are some of the things that the Lord was saying. A worship leader is someone who partners with the Holy Spirit to lead God's people to adore, exalt, sing praises, give thanks, repent, and much more as we enter into the presence of the Lord. They help others to understand and experience biblical truth of who God is as it becomes real through music. So as you're pondering on what your definition of a worship leader is, and as you've heard my definition of a worship leader, let's turn to scripture and see what it says about that. Flip with me to John chapter 4, verse 23. It says, But the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. This Father is looking for those who will worship Him that way. Wow, I think that verse says it all, right? It says that true worship occurs at the intersection of truth and spirit. When we allow the Holy Spirit himself to illuminate our eyes to see who God is, um, we just understand what true worship is. At that intersection is where true worship happens and a response will flow from our hearts and that's exactly what God's looking for. So, we said that our topic today is worship leaders as servants. So let's dive into that second part. What is a servant? Let's take a few seconds. Just think about it. What do you think that means? So when I was thinking about this, this word was really hard for me, if I'm being really honest. I have no idea. Um, and this is what the Lord told me. A servant is someone who listens, obeys, and serves based on the directions given by his or her master. Um, when I, re when I, when the Lord told me that, um, what flashed into my mind was certain instances in the Bible I've seen where it says, um, uh, where people address themselves as servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. And while I sat on that phrase, um, I tried to understand what that meant. Why did they address themselves as that way, as servants of the Lord Jesus Christ? So ultimately, as I pondered on that phrase, I realized that as servants, we can only serve from the direction of the Lord. Um, and the one thing that we can clearly agree on as servants of the Lord is that the Lord has a heart for humanity. So that's my definition about it, but let's see what the Bible says about it. Obviously, the Bible has a lot to say about servanthood because the biggest theme, the most central theme of the Bible is the servant of all, Jesus Christ himself. So flip with me to Mark chapter 10, Verse 42 to 45. So Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone else. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. So I'm going to be very honest. I was really confused when I was reading that verse. How can someone who's being called to a leader need to actually be a servant? How does that work? Doesn't that sound kind of backwards? Well, if you really think about it, all throughout the Bible, the ideologies of the kingdom definitely go against the ideologies of society, even for today. Just like it says in the verse we read, in Christ, the goal of leadership is to serve others. We actually demonstrate our Christ-likeness when we serve others. I want you guys to flip with me to Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. It says, Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges and he took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. 
When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. So we can see clearly here in that verse that Jesus humbled himself in obedience to the will and the heart of the Father um, by serving you and me. And what did that even mean for him? It meant that death on a cross. That's extreme, right? So um, when I think about it, in my personal life, there have been so many instances in which the Lord has been calling me to servant leadership. A really big thing that I've discovered in my life about servant leadership is that it requires a lot of humility, especially if you're in the constant eye of the public. Um, That true humility cannot happen unless you're actively listening and obeying to the Lord, um, even in moments of uncertainty. Um, When you actually live in that space of listening to the Lord, leaning on the Lord, learning to trust Him, um, then you can see that the Lord's heart for humanity and it comes into play. And that servant leadership will just directly flow from your heart. For example, as I was privately communing and speaking with the Lord throughout my week, um, there were a lot of things that he revealed to me about his heart. Um, And as we came to a worship session later on in the week, I felt the Lord speak to me on a few scriptures he showed me. And at the time when the Lord told me that, I was like, oh man, Lord, I really don't want to say this out loud. I'm so nervous. I hate talking in front of people. And I even asked the Lord in that moment, are you sure? Do you really want me to say this? Um, so it took a lot of guts, but I humbled myself in obedience, just like we read in the scripture, how Jesus did. I humbled myself to, so that he could reveal his heart in that moment. Um, and After I shared that in that worship session, a few people actually reached out to me and said that that word that I spoke from the Lord was actually for them. And I just felt so humbled in that moment. The Lord used me um, in that moment, even though I was uncertain, because I listened to him and I acted in obedience um, in that moment. So this goes to say, servant leadership can look really different for each person, um, especially if we're all involved in different aspects of worship. But make no doubt about it, the Lord is calling you specifically to be a worship leader by serving people in the way that He is asking you to. So really, I just want to encourage you guys to think about all the questions that I asked and um, that I presented in this time. I want you to go directly to the Lord and ask Him, what do you want me to do? How can I listen? How can I lead in the way that you want me to? Um, he, um, just like we read in all the scriptures, Don't be surprised if that leadership actually looks like servanthood because his heart is and always will be for humanity. Thank you so much, y'all. 